What's up, real world? Twisted luck. Hope everybody's good. Thanks for being here. So I just want to say real quick, I saw the other day, one person, no one's ever said this. Uh, someone was like, hey, when you make videos in your truck, or you know, you have to have a stock exhaust if you're gonna do that. This is for you. That was just funny. Uh, that that's the only time I've ever heard anybody say that before. It was followed by a LOL, so I don't think it was like it was it was it was friendly fire, I think. But uh, yeah, no, I will not stock exhaust. Absolutely not. But actually, just the opposite. I've gotten several comments in many videos that like I don't really even hear it in the videos when I edit them and when I look at them. Uh, I don't really even hear it. With headphones in, I can hear it a little bit better. Uh, but the only comments I've ever gotten about that is people saying, wow, I love your exhaust sounds awesome. And thank you to those people. This is a custom made exhaust um, that I made myself, um, partly by necessity and partly because I love a nice sound. Anyway, so uh, I, I saw this today. Um, it popped up when I was looking at the Twitter, at Twisted Luck Inc, I-N-C, and uh, I was like, well, that's interesting. Isn't that interesting? Because if if you remember, we just talked about the other day, well, for one, we have talked about for since the beginning of all the nonsense, all the nonsense and dip chittery uh, that don't do this, please, I hope people, you know, leave their kids alone, uh, please, do your own research, which I know they claim are the four dangerous words, uh, but please, please, please don't just do this to children because the TV says so. Um, make a decision, especially on your kids, for your kids, based upon your own deep, deep research. Please, please, right? Uh, but anyway, so we, we've said that for a long time. But now, as we discussed, uh, Billy G, good old Billy G, oh, uh, hey ho, uh, <laughs> hey ho, Billy G here. Um, like we said, that he came out and said that, uh, not so bad after all, not so bad, you know, in the beginning we didn't know much about it, you know, what did we know? And they even said that the Kool-Aid, this is just a brief recap of everything we talked about the other day, even they said the Kool-Aid, eh, not so effective, right? Oh, it didn't really work, we were, uh, we were, we were in the lab and we were mixing things together, we put some Ajax in there and some Dawn because we know Dawn works stuff on grease. So we thought, hey, maybe give it a try. Uh, but that didn't work either. We, we put some, uh, we crushed up some Apple Jacks and put those in there. Uh, Captain Crunch didn't seem to work so well, didn't mix so well into a liquid. Uh, so he's like, you know, we didn't, that didn't really work so much, but we have some ideas to improve it. But it's, to me, it's contradicting himself because when he's like, hey, turns out the whole thing wasn't so bad. It wasn't as bad as we thought, you know. Uh, you know, the, not as, not as many people met the demise as we expected in the beginning, you know, hey, sorry for the panic, Woo -hey. you know, we kind of pulled that fire, we smelled smoke, pulled the fire alarm, and we we're like, oh, oh, geez, oh, geez, maybe that was just steam, somebody was boiling a pot of water, right, so this is pretty much what he's saying, so for that to come out now and say it's authorized for emergency use, explain to me what's the emergency, right? Because the, the, the know-all of everything, Billy G, says that, not so bad. False alarm, sorry. That's how I interpret it, what, he, what he said, right? And did he say those exact words? No, but that's essentially what he said. He said exactly that. He's like, you know, wasn't, wasn't as bad as we thought. In the beginning, we didn't know much about it, you know? And we were just taking precautions, right? Because the good of the people is my number one goal, right? My number one priority, keep you safe. But yeah, right, you know, that's... Um, so for this to continue to go on, see, like I said, we, you and I, those who see with our own eyes, think with our own mind, we already know, you know, we, we've been on this page from the beginning. Right away, we didn't stand up and panic. We were like, wait, hold on, guys, everybody chill for a minute. Let's think about this rationally, right? Because look, yeah, I know they say everything's, everything's going to hell, but do you see it with your eyes? Look, you know, we, we did that from the beginning. So we knew never to jump into this stuff. We saw red flags when we, you know, we, we recognized red flags when we saw them. But I don't understand now how, to anybody that follows the, the, the general narrative, 
and would believe anything Billy G says because, well, you know, he is he is seen as some sort of, you know, computer geek god, all knowing of everything for some reason, somehow, which nobody has explained. Uh, but now that he has said that, so how can they justify continuing this? You know, do, do you think he went rogue? And now they're ousting him, like, damn it, Billy G, I can't believe you did this. You ruined it. Ruined. You came out and told the truth. Now we must, I don't know what they must do. But no, I don't think that's at all the case. I don't think it went rogue. I, I think that was quite planned, um, scripted. That's what, you know, I think it's partially, get your guard down. Get your guard down, fellas. Hey, hole, get your guard down, fellas. I'm gonna come up and sneak in a sucker punch, uh, you know, or, or you know, his uh, his wife's gonna come. His smirking wife is also creepily smirking wife. Actually, not wife anymore, right? Didn't they? Uh, didn't they? Didn't she smarten up? Or you know, I don't know. She's probably the devil too. I don't know. But that is peculiar to me. I, I would like to see another interview with Billy to say, Billy. Billy, now, you said these things. We'll play it back if we need to. But now, well, golly gee heck, there's still emergency authorizing things to rush out and save your kids from something that you said they don't need saving from. So why would they do this, right? And 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 a Kool-Aid, too, that he, he said, ah, uh, you know, turns out it wasn't so effective. But again, we didn't know anything about it. You know, it was new. We were we were just trying to come up with something for something. We didn't know nothing about nothing, right? So I don't understand how they justify this now. I really don't. Or, or you know, what they would say. But people are just so blinded, blinded by the poop that has been forced in their eyes, their ears, their mouth, and their noses for two years. Now all they see is poop. You know, they see in brown only. They're like, oh, okay, give it to me. TV says I need this. TV says I have to give this to my child. Right? It's ridiculous. I found that a little bit startling that that would come out. That would, They're still saying this. They're still saying this. And even without Billy G coming out and saying these things, where are the people at this point in the game that are still going out and saying, you know what? We really need protection. We really need protection because we've been out in the real world, real world, and it's terrifying out there. It's ter even the mainstream media has stopped the 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 fear, you know, the fear push and the all the nonsense at the moment, anyway, right? And they're they're popping little hints of it back, you know, here and there. But at this point in the game, for sure, nobody's eyes are seeing, you know, just chaos that would make them say, we better run out and uh, save ourselves. And the TV's not telling them to do it. So at this point in the game, who is still doing that? But what's scary is some are. Why? Who are these people? What, you know, are they, uh, I don't know, are they even human? Because I don't understand sometimes how the mind can even work in such illogical ways. You know, when we see things that are clearly, clearly nonsense, we'll just use the sky for an example, right? The sky is clearly blue. So when there are people that literally don't see it as being blue, I don't even understand how their minds compute. You know, what happens when, when two plus two is clearly four, but they say, no, no, it's five. And then there are some people who just, they will fight and defend the fact that it's five, not four, like you say, dummy. I don't understand how these people work. So emergency use. Uh, I don't understand how they're trying to pull that off when they are also saying, hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But, and then you still have a three-letter agency that is has your best interest in mind, right? Wants to look out for you. They are still going to uh, emergency authorize things. Um, all these things should be eye-openers to people. Huge eye-openers. And at this point, this far in, I I have such a hard time understanding how there's any set of eyes left unopened still at this point in the game. But I guess it, it's pretty scary 
that there are still a lot of people that will have a lot of faith in something, um, a, a product, a consumable, right? Um, because the three letter agency has put their stamp of approval on it. That's scary because once your eyes have become open and then they continue to open wider and wider and wider, you realize, uh, I don't have to get into it, you know what you realize. And uh, it's not pleasant. You have to make it pleasant though, you know? We, we live in, uh, I try to be an extremely positive person all the time. And um, I always express positivity and surround my kids with positivity. And I repel negativity. Like I don't, I don't like it, I don't like to be around it. And some people find that hard because we're in such a negative place, especially when you start to realize the realities and the truths of everything of the world, right? It's a very negative, depressing place. Uh, so it's up to you to make it positive. But we've been fooled for a long time in a lot of ways. And there's still people that will, they'll tell me I'm crazy. They'll tell me I'm stupid, you know, because the TV would never lie to them. And you know, they, there's no reason to look into it for yourself because they're here to help you. You know, and I feel bad for those people, honestly. I'm not gonna, you know, every once in a while I'll get a Twitter warrior and be like, you're so dumb, I can't believe, here, this is clearly vapor in the sky. Right, but but it's not, <laughs> you know, but I'm not gonna fight with these people. I feel bad for them. At the end of the day, I feel bad for them. But, you know, you have to be aware and we have to try to spread as much awareness as we can. And in the name of positivity, um, I haven't done anything in a while where we just tell a random story or something just to break up the doom and gloom because we are surrounded by the doom and gloom. So I'm going to do that a little bit right here. I had some more topics I want to talk about, but instead, uh, let's just talk about random nonsense. I was reminded of something yesterday. It's going to be personal story time, right? I was reminded of something yesterday that, and I totally forgot about it. Now, let me preface this by saying um, I can't stand uh, soliciting phone calls or people knocking at my door. I, that's even worse. Oh, another one. Somebody knocks on my door today, right? He's got a clipboard and, a, and an ID badge. I open the door and I'm and I always say to these people, "We're good. Take care." As soon as before they keep, can even speak, because that's a pet peeve. I know where to find anything I need. I need. Don't come to my door with it, right? And he says, "Well, I just want to ask you, is that your suburban out there?" I'm like, "What's? Yeah. Well, what tipped you off? The fact that it's in my driveway." And uh, he's like, well, uh, rights trump people, what does that mean? I said, what? Rights trump people. I'm like, what does that mean? He's like, that's what I'm asking you. It says it on the back of your truck. I'm like, no, it doesn't. And there's a sticker back there that says rights trump feelings. And he's like, well, what does it say then? I'm like, go read it again. What are you talking about? He's like, oh, right trump's feelings. And he still read it wrong. He's like, what does that mean? I'm like, what does it mean? Oh, it's like anti-DT. I'm like, oh. do you know what the word, do you know that word has a meaning? It's not a name. Do you understand? This guy literally didn't understand the meaning of the word. He literally. And he comes to my door to question me about it and then try to sell me pest control. But anyway, so uh, I hate that, but I hate telemarketers. But years and years ago, now don't hate me. I was a kid, right? I just, I, I, did, I was looking for a job, right? Uh, just needed to make, one way to make some money. I was a kid. I was like 17, looking to make, you know, money. You know, at 17, you don't have a whole bunch of expenses or anything. I had worked since I was 14 years old, but at this time I was kind of just hanging out, doing nothing, you know. So uh, I found this telemarketing job, and uh, they seemed to hire anybody, and they were paying really well, you know, for my age and for what you had to do. It paid. I don't remember what it was at the time, but it was really well. Plus you got bonuses for sales. And what it was was a credit card. You're calling people with credit card applications. Basically say, hey, do you want to apply for this? And they say yes or no, All right? And they give you bonuses and you leave early. If you make make a quota every night, they could leave early. And uh, so I was no, I'm not, I'm not into this job. You know, I know it's not something I'm gonna do for a long time. So I'm in there and I, yeah, it definitely wasn't for me. I didn't like it. Cause I would end up, you know, uh, we used to always do prank calls too. So I'd end up joking and laughing with people on the phone instead of trying to sell them credit cards, right? But then I caught on to something and I just started, <laughs> this is the bad part. <laughs> I didn't know anything about anything. I was a kid, right? I just started I, that quota and that commission and stuff. 
I'm like, oh, that person said yes, that person said yes, that person said yes, that person said yes. I was getting bonuses and leaving early like every night. My name's up on the board. They're like, oh, everybody needs to be more like him. And I'm like, hmm, I don't think you want that, but okay. And in my mind, I was thinking, I didn't know nothing, anything about credit or anything like that. And I was thinking, who wouldn't want a credit card anyway? So I'm doing these people a favor, right? Uh, not even realizing, you know, credit scores and stuff, you know, so that was terrible. But, um, but then I got bored. I got bored pretty quick. So what I started to do, it would, so the number would, come up right on you had a computer screen and it would automatically call the number and then once they answered their information will pop up pop up on the screen so you don't know who you're calling until they've answered the phone and then bing here's their information they've already said hello so you got to get right into it uh well i don't know how i've never been very tech savvy not a computer genius by any stretch of the imagination but i found a way to actually change their name in the system save it and send it back into the system because you could put if you put like no answer or whatever it was it would kick back into the system you could put don't call back or call back right or something i don't exactly remember but it'll go back in the system but i figured out how to change their name and save it into the system kick it back in so they would be called again but they would be asked so i started doing things like this is just a generic you know ben dover uh, can I speak to IP freely, you know, and all stupid things like that. I was laughing to myself. I thought it was a riot. And then it, I got so into it. I did so much of this that me and friends would hang out at night and we would write down all these names, you know, words together that would sound like names, but would sound ridiculous. We came up with so much. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these things. And then I would go in the next day, not to sell credit cards, my mission was to get as many of these funny names into the system as I possibly could. And there's a lot of people in this call center, right? And they call thousands, probably tens and hundreds of thousands of different numbers and names. And I started to hear from people, hear chatter around that, oh, they got this ridiculous name, they got this, so I knew it was working, right? And then I started hearing more and more, and then they were popping up for me. So I had done, I don't know, thousands of these damn things. And this was funny, right? It was. I thought it was funny. I was entertained by it. And any, I told a couple people that worked in there that seemed cool what I was doing. They thought it was a riot. I taught a couple people how to do it, unfortunately for them, if they like that job. Uh, but uh, it was all fun and games until I got there one day. And they, uh, almost right away, they're like, call me into the office. You know, some stupid, probably, some kid that's probably, you know, two years older than me as a manager of, a, you know, this pop-up call center garbage right and he's like oh so they he says they've been they started getting some complaints from the public that uh the company was calling them but you know like prank calling them calling and asking for all these ridiculous names and they started to get more and more calls so they started to look into it and their it department started to look into it and they found that he had he's like i have a printout here of how many names have been changed and it was a stack of paper. And he's like, uh, this has caused a lot, of, a lot of trouble for us. Our IT team is trying to figure out how to, how to correct it. This is like, I figured something out that, like, like, like as if I am some kind of hacking genius. And that's what they, they wanted, like the antidote from me. You know, they, they wanted the secret code. And I'm like, I, uh, all I said was, uh, I knew they were about to fire me. So I was like, I quit. <laughs> I spit that out real quick. And he's like, all surprised. Oh, you quit? I'm like, yeah, yeah, obviously I quit. And then I told him, I was like, I don't know. He didn't believe me. He didn't believe me how I did it. And I was like, yeah, it's really easy. You know, if I did it, I assure you it's really easy. And you know, then computers weren't even, a, you know, a big thing. They weren't in everybody's house. Everybody was online all the time. That wasn't a thing. And I sure the hell, I couldn't do it today, you know? Um, so, so yeah, that was pretty funny. Also, very brief time, probably around that same time, I worked, uh, you know, 411 if you call information. Is that even still a thing anymore? I don't know. But it used to be a thing. You call 401. You used to be like, city and state, please. And then, you know, you would say the number you're looking for, for the name or the business or whatever. And uh, so how it worked there was it would, it would be automated they would say the city and state to the automated thing and they would pre-record what they're looking oh no they would come then they would come to me after they said the city and state i guess it got transferred to where we were 
and then they would tell me what they're looking for. And this phone system sucked. It was terrible. I could barely ever understand what anybody was saying. And people would get so frustrated. And again, I'm a kid, and, I, and I'm like, I'm not going to deal with this, you know, because people get annoyed. They'd be like, uh, uh, I'd be like, what? Uh, and I would say, uh, <laughs> I, I would say the wrong thing. They'd be like, no, this. And I'd be like, this? No, this. I'm like, what is going on? I don't understand. You know, so I was just, oh, I would just pretend to understand. Oh, okay, sorry about that. And I would send them to something, anything. Uh, maybe the last thing that I thought that they asked for, even though I know it's wrong. So I was sending people, and I know that happened. I know, because it had happened to me before, trying to call information. So I know that's why. And I wasn't trying to be malicious, but yeah, that was, uh, so So anybody that's ever had any frustra frustrations, if you ever use the 411 system, uh, that's why. That's why it's a crappy system and cra crappy phone system and uh, kids that work there that just don't care. They're not going to deal with any nonsense or like whatever. You know, you, you're looking, you're looking for Pizza Hut, and I'm sending you to Burger King, my friend, because I can't understand what the hell you're saying, and you're getting snippy with me. But that job, I pro I think, I have very few memories of that job, so I, I probably, hey, I don't know, I got people in the road, cars coming towards me. Uh, I probably did that job for only like a week. The, the memories there are very, very small. But anyway, yeah, just break up the doom and gloom. Some, what you, did any of you have any crazy nonsense jobs that? Uh, has anybody done any jobs that are generally annoying to people? Now, again, both of these jobs I didn't want, I didn't like, and I didn't keep long. Um, they were just something for a kid to make some money to go wreak havoc with. Uh, but I think several of us have had annoying jobs and uh, ridiculous things. If not, we've been on the receiving end of those ridiculous, annoying things. But anyway, positivity. Try to be positive, but be aware of everything going on. And uh, everybody now come together. Everybody now come together. That's not how the song goes, but I was going to go somewhere else with that. And then I got all the words got messed up in my mind. So I abandoned ship. Anyway, thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Twisted love truth. And I will see you soon.